next on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're live from Denver to answer your questions on hay tools and farm equipment that can help your bottom line. We have an expert panel from New Holland Agriculture here, so get ready to call right now. And now, a live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. When it comes to the cattle business, high quality feed and hay is essential. And there's no doubt having the right hay tools, machinery, and equipment pays off in a big way. So tonight, we're taking your calls and your questions. And here to answer them are the experts from New Holland Agriculture. Joining us in the studio are Michael Kornman. He serves as the marketing segment manager for New Holland. Kurt Hoffman. Kurt is the manager for baling products. And Jordan Molesky is the manager for cutting products for New Holland. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. We're sure glad you're here. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. We're ready for your questions regarding hay tools, tractors, and maximizing the value of machinery and equipment on your own farm or ranch. Now, the number to call is 1-888-824-6688. Mike, as we get started, uh, give folks just an update on New Holland and a little bit about uh, your role in the livestock industry. Sure. I work as the segment marketing manager for dairy and livestock customers, leading all of the brand efforts for hay and forage and for mid-range tractors in the 60 to 140 horsepower range. And New Holland is celebrating the 120th anniversary mm -hmm. this year. The company was founded back in 1895 by a gentleman by the name of Abe Zimmerman. And he, along with Henry Ford and Giovanni Agnelli, helped shape the company to where it is today, a global uh, agriculture equipment provider for hay and forage and all agriculture products. We're continuing our partnership with the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association here because we recognize the value in partnering with organizations such as the NCBA and being able to provide educational content on hay and forage making practices at, such as here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Yeah, we really appreciate your support. It, you've had a big, big presence at our NCBA uh, trade show the last couple of years, uh, so we appreciate that. Tell folks, uh, why should cattlemen consider New Holland as a valuable resource in their cattle operation? Yeah, whenever you look at our product offering, we have probably the broadest range of hay and forage equipment from our pool type mower conditioners, uh, balers, as well as self-propelled equipment, self-propelled forage harvesters, and then the tractors to be able to complement those hay and forage equipments, really targeting and focused on uh, dairy and livestock producers that are making hay as part of uh, their feed for their livestock and their animals, as well as commercial operations for uh, growing hay and selling that for the consumption for animals. Sure. We're anxious to talk about all those things tonight. And we're excited to have our friends from New Holland Agriculture taking your calls live on the air. Again, the number to dial is 1-888-824-6688. And we're also asking you tonight to join us as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's easy to do. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF. We'll tell you about the great incentives you'll get on New Holland equipment. And if you join now, you can receive a free copy of New Holland's Haymaker's Handbook. So, so the next question I guess I had for you is, is what makes New Holland so e unique in, in, in the cattle industry? When you look at our hay and forage equipment, no one else bales more hay in a day than New Holland, mm. given our heritage and our history in haymaking. And the product lines have really advanced over the years to become the gold standard of haymaking equipment. We recognize that. We take customer input into our product development, apply that, and really take pride in that input in producing quality products that help our producers, whether they be cattlemen, uh, be more profitable in their operations and make sure that they're maximizing that feed for their animals. Let's go to uh, an email question that came in earlier today. Um, and uh, we had a, a lady from Nebraska, Ann, um, write in and ask, I'm considering baling corn stalks for the first time. I have a regular dry hay baler. Uh, will I be able to bale stalks? What do you think? <clears throat> yeah, and the answer to that is yes. Uh, there's some things you could do with your uh, round baler when you order a round baler, like add on a five-bar pickup in mm -hmm. the case of a specialty crop uh, New Holland baler. 
Um, some other things that you can have on your baler would be an expeller roll that goes underneath the uh, tailgate to keep trash from building up inside the baler mm -hmm. in dry conditions. Um, raking a windrow that's the full width of the pickup gives you a nice bail. Mm -hmm. so, so those are some of the things that you could do. Another question uh, from, from email, uh, Clinton uh, emailed us from Iowa. He said, uh, what are the benefits of endless belts? I know they cost more trying to decide whether or not it's worth it or not. So, so what would you tell Clinton? Uh, well, Clinton would benefit from having less maintenance because the belts don't stretch. Typically with endless belts, they're mm -hmm. going to shrink a little bit uh, where lace belts would, would stretch, which by rights, you're supposed to be taking those lacings apart, laying them down on the floor cutting those belts to length each year wow. and uh, also replacing the, the lacings as well as the cables. So with Endless, you don't have any of that maintenance. Uh, they track truer. Uh, it's an easier belt to just basically maintain. If I can add that yeah. the Endless belts are also stronger. That weakest part of the link is, of the belt is actually at the lacing. So there's mm. more stress in that area where they're laced formed together and stuff. Our Endless belts are backed with a three-year, 15,000 bale bonded protection. Wow. Uh, that just really reinforces the strength and durability in those belts. So it really is about more uptime, is that right? For sure. Yeah. Had a uh, fellow from, from Wyoming, Sam, uh, wrote us. He said, I've noticed that many new tractors are four-wheel drive. Do you have any two-wheel drive tractor options? I've noticed the same thing. Yes, uh, we have uh, two-wheel drive tractors available in our lineup, predominantly less than 100 horsepower. The T4, the TS6 series tractors all have uh, two-wheel drive options available for haying or for those customers that are in terrain that doesn't require front-wheel drive mm -hmm. assist from that standpoint. It's becoming less of a, uh, a take rate or less popular, but there's still certain areas of, of the country that they're sold more so than front-wheel drive tractors. Good question. Yeah, that is an interesting question. You know, there's been a lot of advances in farm machinery, and I've noticed it as I've looked at uh, the equipment uh, there at the uh, trade show every year. Um, what would be two or three of the most recent advances that you think our viewers might be interested in? I guess uh, probably at the top of my list would be our roll belt round balers. When mm -hmm. you look at the increase of 20% more capacity over our prior BR7000 series, uh, really providing more uh, in capacity for that producer through the changes in the pickup design, the way it is feeding. Um, our self-propelled wind rowers continue to evolve as well in terms of incorporating auto guidance as available as an option, utilizing technology, helping to reduce operator fatigue, providing more precision in the cutting uh, standpoint. Our disc bind, disc mirror conditioners continue to advance in terms of the cutter bar technology mm -hmm. with less uh, uh, maintenance required on those and also better serviceability um, in, when they do come in contact with a foreign object and really making it easier. We recognize that many of the producers are looking to be able to accomplish more in a day right. and trying to utilize technology and advancements with that and providing better re reliability and better durability in our equipment. Yeah, I want to dig a little deeper in a couple of the technologies you mentioned just a little sure. later, but right now it sounds like we have our first caller on the line. Sandy's calling us from Idaho. Sandy, thanks for calling. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. What? I was just wondering, what types of things should I think about when I'm hooking my baler up to my tractor? Say that again. What types of things should I be thinking about when I'm hooking up my baler oh. to my tractor? Yeah, hooking up balers to tractors. So from a safety standpoint, from a, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, some of the things, you know, if we've bought a new round baler and uh, hooking it up to the tractor I've had, uh, our wheel stance as far as width is probably okay, but maybe okay. you bought a wide pickup instead of a narrow pickup. So maybe we need to reanalyze whether the rear wheels and front wheels are wide enough to uh, not drive over the windrow. Gotcha. Um, some of the other things you want to take a look at is um, making sure that uh, the angle of the PTO from the front cross to the rear cross is split roughly 50-50. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you have an offset draw bar that you can adjust. Um, most balers will have a clevis in the front that you can adjust up and down. Sure. So you want to make sure you raise the baler up as much as you can because the last thing you want is a hitch pin grabbing a hold of crop right. and then spitting off slugs that are going into the baler right. and uh, making it not feed really uniformly. So getting a hitch pin that's the same length as the width of the clevis is very important as well. That's good. And I, I think we have another caller. Uh, Jim is calling us from Michigan. Jim, things uh, yes. turn into spring. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm better than nothing. How are you? Good. Thanks for calling. Yeah. I've got a round baler, a BR, uh, 
740. It, it works really good. I put some extra wheels on the pickup table, and that helped it. But I get so much uh, shaft on it. It takes me over a half hour. There's so many little places on it to blow out. Do you have any good answers? Um, some of the things that we can do there um, would be, it, I don't know if you have an opportunity to bale wetter moisture materials. Is this a, a crop cutter by chance or a silage special? Still with us, Jim? He, he may have, he may okay. have you know, yeah. Uh, cool. That would be an opportunity for us, um, trying to rake more material together okay. into a windrow so that yeah. uh, we maintain our moisture longer as we're baling throughout the day throughout or the day. however long we would be baling trying to reduce the amount of crop that's getting broken apart because we're probably bailing, yeah. you know, drier in drier and, conditions. And it's probably a good point. I mean, talk a little bit about uh, your local dealers and kind of the support that some of those folks can give in, a, in an issue like this. Certainly. Um, also adjusting your wind guard and making sure your wind guard's down tight uh, against your pickup tines okay. and not flipping way up. That way crop is optimally uh, being fed into the pickup and not sure. uh, boiling up in front of the pickup. Okay. That would help reduce it as well. Very good. I think Jim is with us next uh, from Louisiana, I'm told. Jim? Jim, are you with us? Hello? Yes, go ahead with your question, Jim. Uh, my name is James. James, okay, sorry about that. That's all right, okay. My question is, I have a TN75 I bought used. Uh, I've been using it to move hay with a front end loader and the back lift arms. Everything's fine. Yesterday I was in the hay field, hooked up my hay rake, plugged in the hydraulic, and it shut down my whole hydraulic system. I don't have any, I can't lift the arms on my rake, and neither will my front end loader uh, move. Any troubleshooting, gentlemen? Sir? Well, in a, if, if I may, one of Go the simplest Go things on. that I guess I've encountered in similar situations, we do a lot of, a lot of farm show setup. And uh, in, in those kind of instances, we're always hooking and unhooking this brand new uh, uh, pieces of machinery. Sure. And at times, it can draw down the hydraulic reservoir on the tractor. And if the hydraulic reservoir is low, generally the first sign is the three-point hitch won't go up all the way. Okay. And it progressively gets worse the more oil we take out of there. So the first thing I would look at to keep it simple is simply the amount of hydraulic oil available to the tractor to activate those functions. Okay. Any other, other thoughts for James? Another easy check would be to take uh, your hydraulic filter off and put a new filter on just in case okay. um, we're reaching the filter bypass. Okay. Um, that would be an easy check. The other thing you could do is cut that filter in half and let's see if there's any metal flakes in it. Ah. That tractor had an open center hydraulic system. Okay. So um, <clears throat> that'd be the first thing I would check. Check the reservoir like Jordan had said. Uh, after that, you're probably going to need to grab a repair manual uh, because there'll be um, pressure checks. Possibly a pressure check could have a, a broken spring or a piece of metal that okay. may have gotten into it, not allowing it to build pressure. Sure. So you got to have flow first, and yep. then if you have valving, you have pressure. So that's how you would attack that. I hope that helps, James. Yeah, go ahead. But that's something that his local New Holland dealer could help him sure. troubleshoot as well. and make that repair as well from sure. that. I mean, checking some of the basics as far as fluid sure. levels and uh, filter, changing out the filter, something that the operator can do, and then refer them back to the local New Holland dealer. That's good. James, thanks for your question. We're going to head to break now, but uh, if you'd like more information on any of our topics tonight, you can find out more at the website newholland.com or watch video replays of our show and story anytime. You can do that at our website, and that's cattleman to cattleman.org. We have a lot more discussion ahead tonight and time for your questions. Now, don't forget, it's a great time to join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. It's easy to do. Plus, we'll tell you about New Holland member incentives. To join NCBA, just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit our website, that's beefusa.org. Stay with us. We'll have more of this special live edition of Cattlemen to Cattlemen right after this. New Holland is the undisputed leader in hay tools. We give farmers a wide range of innovative equipment that increases efficiency and productivity all year round. Because to us, smart means providing a smooth, clean cut with faster dry down, plug free conditioning and superior bale density. And smart means leaving less hay on the field to feed more livestock in less time. 
the gold standard has been raised. Visit NHFirstCut.com for a chance to win a one-year round Baylor lease. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts, such as savings on new equipment purchases from New Holland. Hi, I'm Mike Corman with New Holland Agriculture, and I'm pleased here to talk about our New Holland member benefits to the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association members. New Holland offers special benefits to NCBA members, where they can save up to $1,000 off the purchase of a new New Holland equipment. Members can save off the purchase of New Holland hay and forage and mid-range tractors, as well as other products. We have New Holland dealers located throughout the United States. Stop in to your New Holland dealer and learn more. New Holland and NCBA, smart partners for agriculture. Savings on equipment purchases from New Holland is just one of the fantastic deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today at beefusa.org. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Welcome back to this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're talking with the experts from New Holland Agriculture tonight, and we're glad to take your questions. Now is the opportunity, so give us a call. The number is 1-888-824-6688, and we'll get your question on the air. Let's get back to our discussion now, and I believe we've uh, got a caller on the line right now. Ray, you want to go ahead? Yes, sir. I've got a question. Uh, I've got a disc by a, a hay cutter with crimpers on it. Sure. And it seems like after two or three years of cutting hay grazer with it, it doesn't want to take the, the, the hay up in the, the crimpers anymore. And I was wanting to know what would cause that. Is it because the rubber's getting hard on it or, or what? Great question. Disc mine. What do you say, Jordan? So one of the biggest things when you're, when you're feeding the, the rolls on a disc mower conditioner, there's a couple things to look at. One, the condition of the lifters. It may not even be the rolls themselves. The lifters are the, the cast wings that are actually mounted on the, on the cutting discs themselves. Okay. As they wear, particularly in a sandier area, they're going to lose their effectiveness in lifting that crop and feeding it into the rolls. Hmm. Uh, rolls themselves do wear over time, particularly when the timing adjustment's not monitored because they can rub and touch. So making sure your rolls are in time and that they're gapped properly is going to also help really improve uh, feeding of that crop. Very good. Thank you for the call. Stan is calling us from Tennessee. How are you doing tonight, Stan? Oh, Dan, I'm sorry. Dan? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm here. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, sure. Hey, this program is absolutely amazing. Today, um, I have a very small operation, 35 acres, and I, I uh, cut hay on about uh, 12 to 15 of it, but I have horses. And... Uh, uh -huh. I, uh, today I found a very nice used New Holland hay rake, uh, so I purchased it, and I like New Holland equipment, right. and in the area there are some New Holland uh, square balers, and I was wondering what you might be able to tell me uh, to look for in the purchase of a square baler, because I've seen people have a lot of trouble with the timing on them, sometimes they don't tie right, the string breaks, whatever, uh, so what do I need to look for, because square baling is the way I'm going to have to go, and it's a small operation, and do they make a small one? Uh, you know, is there a size differential here that I might need to look for when purchasing a square baler? Super. It sounds like a timely question. So what do you have uh, to tell us about square balers? Then? You bet. Uh, <clears throat> as far as size, they're 14 by 18 size bales as far as height and width. That's going to be pretty much standard. Yep. But depending upon the model number, some of them have more strokes per minute. Like our current small square baler, a BC 5050, would be the smaller one mm -hmm. at 79 strokes a minute. So we rated it lower horsepower. So depending upon what size of tractor you have to pull it, that baler will actually work with as low as about 45 horsepower. Wow. But then when you jump up to the next two sizes, <clears throat> you need more power because now uh, things are stroked faster, um, mm -hmm. but the same size bale. So keep that in mind as you're looking at balers, but then also some other things to take a look at would be needles. If you get underneath the baler and take a look at the needles, there's a slot obviously in the needles for the twine to, to go through. Mm -hmm. If that baler's had a lot of twine through it, it'll actually cut or start cutting through that slot. So that's one area you can look for 
uh, estimating bail count. Another thing you can do is take the plunger and move it side to side. Um, if you have the chance to demo that baler, a sweet thing to do is just run a few bales through it and see how clean the cut side of the bale is. If it's very washboardy, then you most definitely need to reshim your stationary knife and your plunger knife. You may even need to reshim plunger rails, which, hey, none of that stuff's uh, that expensive, but it just takes time to do that. And then uh, the last thing you can look at up in the knotter area would yeah. be twine discs to see if they're notched out just like the needles would be. Very good. Some real good practical advice. Thanks so much. I was going to ask you, Mike, uh, you know, getting in and out of some of these uh, cabs at, uh, at convention, uh, you really have done a nice job keeping creature comforts in mind. Highlight some of the advances you all have made at New Holland as it relates to the cab and that operator center. Yeah, uh, we recognize that operators spend a lot of time in the cab of the tractor, and we feel that it's very important for them to be able to feel comfortable and spacious with the controls. So all of that is taken into consideration in terms of the placement of the controls and making sure that they're within uh, a comfortable reach. Also, uh, size and visibility of the cab. Uh, for example, in our new TS6 series, brand new cab uh, for that tractor, very spacious, and now has a visibility panel to be able to see the front end loader whenever it's raised all the way up. Also has an option that can be put in for an instructor seat. So if there's an, uh, another operator, a person that would like to ride along with the operator, he can sit in that instructor seat, still be in a safe position with a seat belt and be able to do that. So comfort is, uh, is, a, is at the top of the list in terms of cab layout and controls for those operators today in our New Holland tractors. Good. We're going to go back to Oklahoma. Hopefully it's not another dental question, but Glenn, are you with us? <laughs> yes, I am. I apologize for the other caller from Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, my question is, I'm going to be putting in about 200 acres of alfalfa. Yep. And I got rid of all my hay equipment years ago, but I'll be buying new. So I want to know what the advantages of the New Holland over Heston would be Heston was the last ones I used, so I'm looking at buying new. So I just want to. So let's split it. Yeah, you can do the Go cutting ahead. and I'll do the bailing. All right. From a cutting standpoint, <clears throat> what do you say? Well, from from a cutting standpoint, there's a, there's a number of differences. You know, one of the things that's a hallmark from an alfalfa standpoint for New Holland is our our traditional Chevron rubber roll. Mm -hmm. The design was originally introduced in 1964. Mm -hmm. It went through a slight evolution through the late 1960s, but overall, the design and the roll placement hasn't changed mm -hmm. because the rolls are the right rolls in the right place at the right time. Mm. Uh, our new disc bind center pivot machines probably be the perfect machine for the size of operation that you're looking to undertake. Uh, disc bind 313 is a 13 foot, and we also have a 16 foot version available with those same rubber rolls. And uh, the rubber rolls have what we call wide dry, which is actually the widest conditioning system of a uh, center pivot pull type machine on the market today. Mm. So that's going to allow you to take that alfalfa crop, lay it out very wide, mm -hmm. so that it's going to dry very quickly for maximum quality. Sure. Probably the you know refocusing on cutter bar, the Momax True Cut, uh, Momax Two, True Modular Disc Cutter Bar is is an innovation that we pioneered uh, a number of years ago on our 1400 series machines, and what that means is you essentially have a small modular gearbox mm -hmm. underneath every cutting disc. So in the event of a, a collision. The, if there's damage to the cutter bar drive, it's contained to that one gearbox, whereas mm -hmm. uh, other brands that use a continuous gear-to-gear -gear style bar mm -hmm. don't have that same level of security. Mm. Uh, and of course, we have our Shock Pro Hub, which we uh, introduced on H7000 series. Uh, the Shock Pro Hub provides a sacrificial part so that if you do have a collision, uh, you're basically replacing that part very quickly in the field with very minimal downtime. All the damage is contained externally of the cutter bar. and mm -hmm. It gives New Holland and our customers uh, a lot of confidence. It gave us enough confidence that we were able to uh, provide an additional two years of cutter bar uh, component protection under the Momax protection to the internal cutter bar drive. That's great. That's great. And before we go to the next caller, what about uh, baling equipment? How does it differ from Heston? You bet. In the round baling world, we now have the opportunity to run a five bar pickup as an upgrade to a, a dry hay baler, or okay. if you're buying a silage special in a four by six size bale you would already have that. If it's a 560, which would be a five by six baler, mm -hmm. you automatically, if you buy a specialty crop, you'd get that five bar pickup with stiffer tines. But one of the new technologies with the new Gen New Holland is split center tine bars. And what that means is, is you have four supports in the pickup basically with half tine bars, if you will, with a split center. So 
if I bend three bands on the right hand side and bend one tine bar, I take half the pickup bands apart. I'm only buying half a tine bar gotcha. back in the field quicker for less money, which is what it's all about. Very good. Yep. We'll take the next caller from Wisconsin. John, go ahead with your call. Hello. Yes, John, we can hear you. Yes, uh, my question is I just bought a brand new uh, New Holland 7020, or yeah, just buying, and the problem is, or what I'm wondering is, I want to make hay dry as fast as possible. You know how it is, it's always going to rain, and I work full time during the day, and I want to know how to set it up properly. I, I wonder if I can set it up wide enough, and I'm running over the windrows. Is that going to disadvantage the drying, or should I have it just as wide as I can without running over it, you know, with the wheels? That's my question. Getting you hay cut. A, yeah, go ahead. This was a 7230, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, which is our, our roll machine and a 10-foot cut. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, liked, I personally like to spread the crop out as wide as possible okay. because the first initial drying cycle is the rapid drying, and the more exposure to sun you get, the faster it's going to dry. You know, if you're not seeing that, then one of the things I'd, I'd look at, obviously, is the, the roll gap, the, the space between the rolls. And you want to have that set somewhere between a sixteenth of an inch and an eighth of an inch, roughly. Uh, the timing needs to be adjusted so that the lugs intermesh properly, of course. And the, probably the, the, the most common, uh, commonly understood adjustment on a New Holland is the, the crank on the back of our disc bind machine. What that does is actually applies roll pressure. And uh, I like to kind of refer to it more like a ringer washer because you're basically just pressing two rolls together sure. that way with a torsion bar. And setting that pressure appropriately is a good place to start. I like to back it off till it's loose, mm. apply 10 turns, make sure that I'm getting the conditioning that I want to see. If it's a little bit heavier stand, I put a few more turns on, a little bit more roll pressure. If it's over conditioning, just back it off a little bit from there. Mm. So those are really the two things, swath width and making sure you're set properly. Yeah, and if the crop is alfalfa, it really doesn't hurt it to drive over it. The key is, is keeping it thin, like Jordan was saying. Sunlight can get to the leaves, open the stomata, let the water out basically in from basically 80% standing moisture to 65% moisture, it's all about the stomata and letting the water out. So driving over it is is, is a much- Don't worry about it. Yeah, exactly, don't worry about it. A lot it. better than getting a bunch of wet hay or hay that's okay. down for three or four days and can't be put up. Correct. I wanted to follow that up, Jordan, I guess, and, and just tell folks, why is cut quality so important if you're trying to put up high quality forage? Well, cut, cut quality is really critical for, uh, for a number of reasons. Three things come to mind. First and foremost, everybody likes their field to look like a fresh mown lawn. <laughs> okay. So there's a, the aesthetic aspect of it. That's the thing people notice first. But if your hay is down and you're having trouble getting it up, anything you're leaving behind is lost tonnage. And lost tonnage for a, for a, a producer is, is, is money lost. Uh, but it's actually a little bit worse than that because for an alfalfa type plant, for example, the plant's going to regrow from the crown. So if a stem is left attached that has been cut off, that stem is going to die. And on subsequent cuttings, it can actually reduce the total quality. So from a quality standpoint and an aesthetic standpoint, it's, it's pretty important. So is there anything else other than uh, what you've already told us about uh, setting that conditioner to maximize dry down and to uh, retain that high quality forage? Well, I mean, it, there's a lot of different kind of types of crops out there. And, and at New Holland, we offer a, a very diverse offering. We have our traditional rubber chevron rolls, mm -hmm. which is the choice of most producers out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our, uh, our new steel chevron rolls. Mm -hmm. and, and the steel chevron roll works very similarly to the, the rubber chevron, but it's got a, a heavier steel cleat tine on it. So what that's going to do is work very well in, in grass haze and cane type crops. Gotcha. Uh, uh, winter forage type applications because it's going to handle the, those abrasive type crops a lot better and abrasive conditions certainly a lot mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. And then we have our advanced leaning edge tine flail system, which is a really uh, innovative system for grass haze primarily. And what that does is actually strips the, the waxy layer off the, the cuticle of the plant. Wow. And instead of intending to crack and crimp the stem, you're actually just removing the, its protective coating mm -hmm. and allowing that moisture to just leave uh, laterally through, through the, uh, the stems or the blades of grass. So. That's really interesting. Well, thank you guys for that insight. Some very, very practical insight for our callers tonight. We're asking you tonight to join us as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. There are special incentives for NCBA members from New Holland Agriculture. And if you join tonight, we'll send you a free copy of New Holland's Haymaker Handbook. You'll want one of those. You can't beat that offer. To find out more and to join now, just give us a call at 1-866-USAB. Stay with us, we'll have more with the experts from New Holland right after this.
When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, flood-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sales support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. Saddle up and make your way to Denver, Colorado for the 2015 Cattle Industry Summer Conference. This is your chance to meet with industry leadership and your fellow cattlemen and women to stay up to date on beef industry trends and policies. Registered attendees will also have access to hot topics at the issues forums. Mark your calendar for the 2015 Cattle Industry Summer Conference, July 15th through 18th in Denver, Colorado. Find out more at beefusa.org. New Holland is the undisputed leader in hay tools. We give farmers a wide range of innovative equipment that increases efficiency and productivity all year round. Because to us, smart means providing a smooth, clean cut with faster dry down, plug free conditioning, and superior bale density. And smart means leaving less hay on the field to feed more livestock in less time. The gold standard has been raised. Visit nhfirstcut.com for a chance to win a one year round baler lease. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. Welcome back to this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Let's get back to the questions. And again, we invite you to give us a call at 1-888-824-6688 with your question. But first, Kurt, I've got a question for you. As we think about uh, uh, the options available uh, to, to, to bale hay and, and to actually cut hay, we were talking about this during the break, cut hay while it's being baled. Tell folks a few of the New Holland options as it relates to that. Sure. Really, we have two. We have bale slice and we have crop cutter. And crop cutter is a, is a rotary cutter. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about bale slice a little bit. Bale slice basically is sickle sections inside the bale chamber that are uh, in the starter roll. So they stick themselves out. The bale will actually roll against those sickle sections and cut grooves into the bale about six inches apart. Um, the key difference is, is that the core is solid and you can pull those knives out with the control box and leave yourself a two, four, six, or eight inch uncut skin if you choose to wrap with twine. Okay. You can cut all the way to the periphery if you wanna use net. So that's kinda of in a gist what bale slice is. It will cost you less money than what crop cutter will be. Crop cutter is gonna have uh, 15 knives, 2.6 inch centers. So you can take every other one out, cut five inch lengths of cut if you want to, or put a custom pattern in there, whatever you choose to do. The knives are spring loaded to protect them against stone ingestion. <clears throat> and um, that bale is cut basically from the very beginning all the way to the edge if you choose to have it that way. You mm. control that with the remotes of the tractor. Um, you'll pull it out whenever you want it out, put it in whenever you want it in. Mm. So those are some of the key differences. Um, another difference with crop cutter is that there's a floor that hydraulically will swing down should you get a rock that goes in there mm. that stalls the um, rotor. You can actually drop the floor down, spit the rock out underneath, or let's say you had to rebale a bale. Maybe somebody got too quick on the draw on the remote the baler didn't wrap it off with net. You can unroll your bale, pull the net out from underneath the bale, throw it in the tractor cab floor, come back around and start baling that, and maybe you got a little aggressive at pulling it in, you stall the rotor, no big deal. Drop your floor down, you dub the space between the rotor and the rotor floor, mm. allow that plug to come into the baler itself, all from the comfort and convenience of the cab. So, so tell us, step back a minute, and, and why should producers even consider processing hay as they're baling it? Sure, um, some of the differences would be a, an uncut bale would weigh 15% less than a cut bale. Okay. So if you're looking at ways to cut down your wrapping costs, maybe some freight costs, maybe you have a limited storage area inside buildings and you want your primest crop in there, if you cut that primer crop, you can get up to 15% more in each bale. Wow. And then some other aspects, maybe grind hay today. If you actually cut it with bale slice or rotor cut, you could eliminate that operation. Yeah. And actually, if you're using a TMR mixer, they break apart nicely, quickly, less wear on the mixer. 
You also get a more uniform mix by having the baler do the cutting versus say a mixer. Mm -hmm. uh, hay would have a tendency to float around in the mix, mm -hmm. whereas you're dealing with a smaller amount of material sure. when you're cutting with a baler, so you get a more precise cut. Yeah, I was thinking that myself. I mean, we currently bale it in big squares, and then we have a grinder come in and actually grind hay that we mix into our total mix ration. What you're telling me is that uh, if we had one of these round balers, really we, we could, you know, eliminate that cost and that expense of uh, having somebody come in and grind hay. You bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had an email question come to us earlier today. Uh, Ryan from Tennessee said, I noticed that my dealer has lots of types of net wrap. How do I know which is best? Well, that's kind of a, an opinion thing. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of widths out there and also different types of net. Um, you predominantly have net widths that are the width of the chamber of the baler. And um, there are also widths that are over width, like say 63 inch net for say a, a five foot wide bale. And you'd run that net in a New Holland baler because we have notches in the side sheets that allow that net to get tucked over the edges. Okay. So you can use just standard old netting that's a little bit wide and get over the edge protection when you're putting them end to end to end for storage. Mm -hmm. um, there's also some other net products out there where we double weave um, the net pattern in the center. Mm -hmm. That's an awesome product for corn stalks, oh, yeah. um, biomass crops like switchgrass, where you need a little bit more strength in the center. Instead of wrapping with four, maybe even five wraps in net, you can cut that back to three, three and a quarter, three and a half by using that new style net. Outstanding. And while we're talking about that, um, what recommendations do you have in terms of how we stack round bales? I see lots of different uh, thoughts and processes, especially outside. You bet. One of the best ways that you can uh, stack hay is first pick a well-drained site. Sure. Ideally, if you had a gravel lot, that would be ideal. Um, but if you stack bales on the bottom and put bales in the creases mm -hmm. and go three high, take a tarp and, and create basically a teepee over it, sure. spike the, the tarp into the ground, that has almost um, as good a protection as what a building would have. Mm. It's pretty close mm. for a lot less money. Yeah, I'd say. Another email question. Um, th this comes to us from, um, from Kansas, and um, I, I don't know, you may have a little better perspective, Jordan. It says he has a 1411 disc bind, and he has trouble making left-hand turns as he's transporting that piece of equipment. What is he talking about there? Well, what he's talking about is the, the 1411 has a, a very innovative tongue design where it's actually curved slightly. Okay. That curved tongue is really intended to, to give really good maneuverability when you're in the field. So you can make 90 degree turns very, very easily. It has the downside, unfortunately, when you're in transport, it can limit your ability to turn to the left. Okay. Uh, one of the things we've actually changed on those with the H7000 is the introduction of uh, our drawbar or three-point mounted type swivel hitches. Mm. And there's a lot of advantages to that swivel hitch. Uh, the swivel hitch itself actually clamps firm to the, to the drawbar pin so that it's no longer pivoting around the drawbar pin. Mm. It actually moves that pivoting point back about two and a half feet and pivots mm. at a, a swivel type gearbox. Gotcha. So because of that, it actually allows the tractor to turn very well both to the right and to the left. Mm. Uh, another major advantage of that is that the PTO stays straight to the back of the tractor at all times. Whereas with a CV type joint on a 1411, it's always swinging. Mm -hmm. There's virtually no movement left or right. So the wear on the PTO shaft is very, very minimal. Mm -hmm. And it eliminates the need for that CV type joint, which is uh, generally a, a high maintenance item. And they can be pretty expensive. And uh, if you hit the lift arm off of that shaft, it's pretty expensive too. <laughs> pretty pricey so repair. That, uh, that is one other big advantage I like to point out to folks. If they've ever done that with a swivel type hitch, you don't have to worry about hitting your, your draw bar or your uh, lift arm into your PTO shaft anymore. That's great perspective. And we uh, go now to one of our callers. Sounds like Jeff is calling us from right here in Colorado. Jeff, thanks for calling. Yeah, Jeff, I'm a big fan. Of, or, uh, Kevin, sorry, this is Jeff. I'm a big fan of the show and uh, wanted to uh, ask a question. I've heard a lot about Tier 4 engines. and I want to know uh, really what's the difference between that and, and what I've got now. And uh, Really, I guess what I'm asking is, is the Tier 4 engine worth the extra money? What do you think? Well, the Tier 4 engines are required by manufacturers because of new emissions laws, and there's several different Tier 4 solutions. Mm -hmm. New Holland is recognized as a clean energy leader uh, from Fiat Powertrain in taking that technology and applying that in our tractors. Uh, for over 100 horsepower tractors, we're using SCR, or select Selective Catalytic Reduction, uh, through the addition of diesel exhaust fluid. Overall, the tractors today are providing less emissions into the air 
than what tractors were at a lower tier level. So it's continued with that way. We're also seeing some increases in fuel efficiency mm. as uh, they're advancing as well compared to the prior series tractors. So it's a mandate by all manufacturers to be able to comply with those emission standards. And uh, there is a difference between the manufacturers in terms of the solutions and taking a look at that. Part of that solution is also determined by the uh, application or the cycle that it's required, whether it's running at a higher engine RPM, uh, pr providing tillage versus more of a, a lower RPM for uh, utilities or chores type applications. But bottom line is uh, all of the tractors today being produced and sold here in the United States are tier four compliant. Very good, good clarification. Kurt, I want to go back to you. Uh, there seems to be a trend towards uh, more high moisture bales. And, and I guess uh, two questions. Number one, what's the moisture contact do you recommend if you're gonna bale you know, high moisture forage? And secondly, uh, what are some of the benefits you see in, in, in high moisture hay bales? Well, moistures can vary anywhere from you know, wet hay at 25% all the way up to standing crop at, you know, 70, 75%. Um, ideally, uh, in the 40 to 60 range is gonna make some of your better quality feed. Um, you are relying on uh, the plastic wrap very heavily if you're underneath 50% moisture to that 25% moisture to create an anaerobic condition for that crop to, to um, ferment in its limited capabilities. Mm -hmm. Above 50, up to 75 or 72-ish, um, you're going to have both uh, anaerobic fermentation as well as, you know, the anaerobic environment. And the anaerobic fermentation will create some acids so that it kind of pickles or preserves the crop. So the key there, though, to remember is, is that use at least one mil thick plastic and you want six wraps per linear foot on that bale to give uh, good protection, especially if you're going to keep it over a year. Mm -hmm. um, if you open one of those bales up and let's say it's nine months later and you get a little bit of white molding on the outside, that's a sign that either the plastic was on the cheap side, maybe it wasn't quite one mil, or maybe you should take a look at doing maybe seven wraps per foot or eight wraps per foot, because maybe you're in a, in a warmer climate like Florida um, in the Southern United States, and typically they'll get more UV um, breakdown of that plastic and need a little bit tighter seal. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some of the things you can do. What do producers at. tell you about what they like about putting up high moisture hay like that? What's awesome about high moisture hay is, is that, <clears throat> you know, cut it one day, bale it the next. Yeah less weather risk. Another cool thing is, is that you're gathering up more of that crop. You're yeah. getting more dry matter tons off of that field because you're getting less shatter of both stems and leaves. So uh, you're doing a better job with what you're given. Yeah. And um, cattle love that stuff. I yeah. mean, it's very digestible. Um, great palatability. Huh? You bet, yep. Very good. Again, great insight, some very, very practical tips. So thank you guys. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association is so happy to have New Holland as a partner. And if you join our organization now, you'll get a free New Holland Haymakers Handbook. So join NCBA today. Give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF. We'll be back with more Cattlemen to Cattlemen live right after this. When it comes to your land, it pays to be smart. At New Holland, smart means giving you a wide range of options to fit your needs, like smooth cutting, flood-free conditioning, and versatility. Smart means putting more hay in the bale and leaving less in the field. It also means providing exceptional after-sale support and growing a legacy that goes far beyond equipment. That's New Holland Smart. Visit your local New Holland dealer today. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts, such as savings on new equipment purchases from New Holland. Hi, I'm Mike Corman with New Holland Agriculture, and I'm pleased here to talk about our New Holland member benefits to the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association members. New Holland offers special benefits to NCBA members, where they can save up to $1,000 off the purchase of a new New Holland equipment. Members can save off the purchase of New Holland hay and forage and mid-range tractors, as well as other products. We have New Holland dealers located throughout the United States. Stop in to your New Holland dealer and learn more. New Holland and NCBA, smart partners for agriculture. 
Savings on equipment purchases from New Holland is just one of the fantastic deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today at beefusa.org. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Welcome back as we continue this special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're going to get final thoughts from our New Holland friends. And Kurt, uh, before we do, I want just to ask a couple of questions. First of all, uh, one of our uh, vi viewers uh, wrote from Ohio, I currently move bales out of the field with a skid loader. I need a better option. What do you suggest? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I guess uh, it really depends on what else he's looking to do in his operation. Uh, from a bale handling perspective, we see a lot of operators that if they're moving a lot of bales out of the hay, out of the field, they're loading trucks, et cetera, that they're moving from skid loaders into telehandlers. Oh, yeah. Because of the reach and capabilities for those telehandlers, you have a quicker transport speed from the field to the edge of the road where, where they may be loading onto trucks or wagons and then being able to stack them higher in the, in the barn. Mm -hmm. Many producers are using front end loaders on their tractors because they're able to use those tractors to be able to gather up the bales or feed those bales throughout the winter. So it really depends on the operation and what else they're looking to be able to do from that. New Holland has a full line of telehandlers from compacts to the large frames uh, as a choice, as well as front end loaders for all of our ag tractors as well. Yeah, very good. And uh, Rick emailed us from Texas and said, I've been looking into a new baler. He'd like to get rid of the clutter of monitors on the tractor. What options do you all have to help? Well, there's a new one that's out there called Isobus. And uh, basically the definition of Isobus is that uh, you have one plug-in in the back of the baler mm. and you use a standard monitor that would have came with the tractor, most likely, if it's obviously if it's, if it's an Isobus tractor, it has a monitor and you plug and play basically. So the implement features as far as like the number of bale uh, net wraps you might put on the bale, bale count, et cetera, would show up basically on the monitor that came with the tractor from the factory. Very good. And we're not gonna get to all the email questions, but one more. Um, Jordan, uh, this question came to us from Ken in Texas. He said, I currently cut hay with a 10 foot disc mower. Been thinking about switching to one of those center pivot machines that you just mentioned a little while ago. Uh, what are the benefits? Well, the, the benefits I would say are, are pretty straightforward, uh, literally. Uh, if you have a side pull type of machine uh, or a three point mounted disc mower, if that's what he's referring to, mm -hmm. you essentially end up cutting around the field in a circle. Mm -hmm. And if you have large acreage fields that are you know, well shaped, square, not odd triangles and things, that, that's not the most productive way to, to harvest that total field. So mm -hmm. a center pivot machine really allows you to harvest your large fe larger fields mm -hmm by cutting in long straight lines, which in turn means you rake your hay in long straight lines. And when you bale your hay, you bale in long straight lines. And you could be more productive overall because you're cutting out those corners right. that you're gonna make with a side pull machine. Uh, there's a lot of other advantages machinery wise, you know, from the wider rolls in our new Dispine series mm -hmm. machines to the available optional Quick Max system for quick change knives. So there's a, a lot of advantages to go into uh, to a center pivot in New Holland. Very good. 
Well, lots of good discussion and lots of great questions, but now uh, we need to get to our final thoughts. And so I'd ask you, Jordan, what would you uh, leave with our viewers this evening? Well, we had a lot of really great questions from, mm -hmm. from our viewers tonight. And I'd like to focus in on, you know, it's springtime when we're all busy and it's planting season, but you know, hay cutting is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to encourage our, our viewers to, you know, pull their disc binds in the shed. Uh, obviously check the oil in the cutter bar and do the traditional maintenance items, but uh, get your operator's manual out and take a look at how to set your roll gap and take a look at how to set your roll pressure. Inspect the condition of, the, of your conditioning rolls to mm -hmm. make sure they're in good shape and they're ready for another season. Mm -hmm. And obviously make sure your knives are good and sharp because cut quality is really, really critical. Very good. Kurt, what would you add? Well, if that old baler's getting tired in the barn and it's time to take a look at a new baler, I'd suggest uh, going down to your New Holland dealer and taking a look at some of the new options we have on the Roll Belt Round Baler series, like five bar pickups, split tine bars like we discussed this afternoon, um, as well as a new active sweep feeder that we have. It's a rotary feeder that's very high capacity, low maintenance. And take a look at maybe something that you haven't purchased before, like endless belts, like we mentioned before with lower maintenance. Um, I think all those things will serve you well. Very good. Michael, what are your final thoughts? Sure. A lot of good questions tonight on the show. Uh, recognize that the New Holland dealers are available as a resource to be able to answer questions. If viewers weren't able to call in tonight, be able to contact their New Holland dealers to ask for questions, insights on haymaking, because New Holland is really known for haymaking. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize that the haying season is, a, is coming upon us, and it's a promotion we're kicking off on nhfirstcut.com hmm. is an opportunity where producers can upload a photo of their first cut of hay mm. and be able to share that. There will be a contest where we'll give away a one-year season of use on a new roll belt round balers. So check that out. Wow. I think it, it played during a commercial there. The n local New Holland dealers have more details on that as well. But we really appreciate the opportunity to partner with NCBA oh, yeah. and have appearances here on Cattleman to Cattleman sharing our information on haymaking practices with the producers. Well, it's, it's so critically important. We always talk about how important forage is to our cattle operations. And uh, you're just helping us figure out how do we uh, not just grow it, but how do we get it up and processed in the most efficient and effective manner because it's so, so important to uh, our, our, our livestock. So thank you so much for coming and thank you for taking these questions this evening. For more information on New Holland's full line of products, visit newholland.com slash NA. Or you can check us out at cattlemantocattleman.org. Well, thanks so much to our panel members tonight, Michael Kornman, Kurt Hoffman, and Jason Malinsky. Malinsky uh, thank you for all you do for New Holland Agriculture, for NCBA, and for our great cattle industry. And thanks to you for your calls tonight. That's all for this week's special live edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. We'll see you next week right here on RFD TV.